So one of the various times my mom brought me back to the hospital, and I wanted it to be clear it wasn't a safety issue, I actually waited until this red door was secure on purpose. And then I stopped at about the position of this blue X. And I told the friendly folks that uh, if it was their position I was a voluntary patient, I intended to make a demonstration that that was not the case. And that if they should like me to be on the unit, they should, uh, well, they were going to discover for themselves whether or not it was voluntary, and we were all going to be well aware of exactly what was happening. Unfortunately, they sort of took me out of the offer. Um, so, it was at about this point that I started screaming and yelling and making a bunch of noise and basically telling them that they were, you know, pissing all over my rights and I intended to assert them, and I was not a voluntary patient. And the whole response to my desire to file a petition for writ of Cavius Corpus was that I was told, at 14 years old, because of my mother's signature, I was a legal status voluntary patient. And I didn't want that mistake to be possible, so they took me down. As, you know, you'd expect. They dragged me back to the unit, and I, I had, oh shit, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful prone restraint experience. It was just so fun. And... Can you explain what that is? It, it, it's where a bunch of assholes hold you down, face down against a mattress or the ground because they don't like you, and then one of them gets on your back, sticks his knee in it, and, you know, you can barely breathe. But the point is, of course, control and safety. And I suppose I should acknowledge one thing. These people were not within my spectrum. They had no idea how to comprehend that what I was doing was an attempt at a political act. All they saw was an unruly child. And they did what they do to unruly children. They demonstrate that you shouldn't be unruly because there are more of them than you and they're strong. So, um, you know, that, that was a key learning point for me, though, because up until that point, I had been openly resisting, you know, I told them many choice things about what I thought of them as human beings, especially moral creatures, and I, I told them all about what assholes they were, and I was really having a fun time of it, because, you know, I wasn't gonna just, you know, go quietly. But it was after that that I sort of realized they meant business, and kept my head down, and I've actually told that story so many times, it's lost some of its emotionality. Can, can you explain to me what kept your head down means? Um, I like in actual actions. Ass. Um, well, let's see. This was the only time I actually tried to make a huge, huge point, but I kept asserting that I had a problem with what was going on, and I did that the whole time. But uh, at some point after that, and that was after a few discharges and admissions, you know, I decided, okay, I, I, I should play along. So I played along. Play along with what? Well, everything. I had been trying to fight them up until that point, and at that point I was like, you know what, fine. You know, if I'm going to need to acknowledge this and everything else... Acknowledge what? Well, I'm... I, I, I understand I, I, what you're I know, saying. I, I guess know, I, I should know. say, I understand what you're saying, but for purposes of... Well, the, the, what I'm trying to do is actually formulate, because it's more complicated than that, of course, it always is. But, um... I suppose I should put it this way. I've been trying to relearn what my level of resistance in this circumstance was. Because of things that would happen later that I'll probably describe, um, I judged my level of resistance for a long time as being much less than would have satisfied me. However, I've had an opportunity to go back in retrospect and realize just how much hell I raised, and I'm actually rather proud of it. So I'm trying to fit that into the question of what giving in looked like here since, you know, it was basically... I got out of Centennial Peaks not because they wanted to let me go. They tried to put me on the RTC and couldn't pay for it, which is how I got hooked up with the FAC team. At the same time, if I had continued to make the noise on RTC I had, making on, had been making on the acute unit, it is possible that they would have been able to more readily justify keeping me there. So, I basically stopped telling them they were assholes and Nazis and started kissing their asses. I complied with the drugs, and I told them, well, I didn't tell them I had insight, though. I, I was very resistant by this point, but at the same time, I stopped being as vocal about denying it. it it's hard to, you know, you can deny things they can't see, but anything they can see, you've got a problem with, because they're going to take anything they can see. If they can see that you're sad, 
if they can see that you were up two hours after bedtime because you were reading and you fucked up that time they were doing checks and they came into the room, even though you had generally been up that late and they just didn't know. Then they would up the drugs, things like that. So you... Oh, fuck, I'm doing this badly. Well, I, I, I guess I should say this as well, just, just to have it out there. Um, I, I guess I'm, I've told this story before, but I've been used to more interviewee, less open-ended, so I'm trying to tell the story and I'm apparently being everywhere. But um, I got discharged from Centennial Peaks into the FAC team. I always thought I made that happen by selling out, but it may just have been an economic thing. I did definitely sell out to a certain extent. I stopped being this vocal because, you know, I didn't want to... I, uh, it was fucking scary. Imagine being held down by your arms and your feet, and someone's got their knee in your back, and you can barely breathe, and this whole thing is being done as a point that they have control over you, which you cannot resist. It was done to make a point, and yeah, they thought they had a safety issue, and they ran it through their standard procedure because they could never imagine what I was trying to say. But it was a point. That was a demonstration. You don't do a thing like that to a human being for a demonstration. I was... I tried to do the standard activist thing at first, you know. I didn't fight back. I let them do their thing because I was just making a point. But when you're in that room and there are five people on you and you can barely breathe, it becomes not so much this high-minded, idealistic, political bullshit. And it becomes, oh my fucking god. And at that point, I'm really more eloquent than this usually. No, this is amazing. It's hard. Something that, well, they ask something to change. I mean, obviously, if you are being restrained and you fight back, they have to do something about that. Obviously. I mean, so, I mean, I didn't fight back at first. They got on top of me, and that's when I freaked out. And I think it's human and natural and normal to freak out in that circumstance. And maybe I should have been wiser. I should have probably connected the dots and realized that that was move number two after I did this. But I was just trying to make a point about how I wasn't there voluntarily. I wasn't expecting them to make a point about how that didn't matter. I mean, I was sort of expecting to demonstrate it didn't matter, but I wasn't expecting them to demonstrate it to me, I guess is what it came down to. I was expecting that to go the other way, even though the events couldn't have been any different. It was not, I was young and naive, and well, I'm better now at doing those things. But, um, I was basically asked to stop resisting. And, you know, it's not like I was, you know, resisting because I felt like it, I was resisting because I was scared. And they called a psychiatrist over, and. When they're asking you to stop resisting, and you are in a restraint situation, and they call a psychiatrist over, that is simply not a good mix of things to be taking place. And even in the midst of all of this, I understood that. And while they weren't bothering really for the most part to address me, they were talking about me in the third person as more of a problem to be solved, you know, they were discussing things like, oh, well, let's shoot her up or something. So, you know, they were about to proceed with that when I finally was able to override the fight-or-flight instinct on my own. And I went limp like they wanted. And I managed to avoid that, and not by very much. And they're all damned for it. Next up. So, the, the, no, you, this you, is you, a, you, you can inquire into it, it's fine. This is, this is